Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crime and Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, none of the above, so it's my full review of the new Kindle Paperwhite. I wanted to start by saying obviously there's a ton of reviews of the new Paperwhite and other Kindles floating around on YouTube. Um, what makes my one different, I think, is that the vast majority of those reviews are from tech YouTubers. So people who, you know, professionally on YouTube or, you know, as a hobby, review gadgets and tech products. I'm not one of those people. Um, I'm a reader. Um, I review books on my channel. So hopefully my view of the Kindle is very much a reader's view um, rather than a view of it as a gadget, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to be talking about is how I found it to use as a, as a means of consuming books. Um, rather than anything else. So hopefully um, that slightly different viewpoint will be useful for people. So with that in mind, I've been using the Kindle to read um, on for a week now. So reading, you know, I've not read any paper books at that time. I've just been reading on the Kindle. Um, and I have to say, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, the battery life is proving to be excellent so far. So I'm on my fifth book um, of the week and I'm still, at, I think I've got about 33% battery left. So I'm going to make sure I keep reading um, all the way until I get to zero um, and then we'll give a, an accurate assessment of the battery life um, at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. Um, one of the slight concerns I had was, you know, versus my Oasis, which obviously has buttons for page turns, um, was I wasn't sure how I'd get on with like one handed reading. Um, but I found it, you know, particularly if I'm holding the book in my right hand, it's very easy to tap the screen and turn the page. Um, and the screen is, when you're reading, is incredibly responsive. So, you know, there's no lag or anything like that. It, it really works wonderfully. Obviously, if you're holding it in your left hand, it's a bit more difficult to tap the right hand side of the screen in order to turn the page. Um, but typically I read with the, the book in my right hand anyway. Um, it's very nicely balanced, so it's easy to hold in you know a variety of different ways. Um, which is nice and I will put in some b-roll, some random b-roll footage um, of me reading on it. Um, the other thing uh, I have to say uh, I hadn't expected um, that I really like about it as opposed to the Oasis is because it's got the flat back um, it's really easy to read on if you put it down on a table or something like that so you know sometimes if I'm eating I'll have it down on the table and you can just tap the screen without the Kindle wobbling at all. I've also found I can use it on our, our step machine so I use that every morning to work out um, and I prop the Kindle up on it um, and can read quite easily while, whilst I'm using the step machine um, which is fantastic. Um, not a step machine, it's a cross trainer. I always get that wrong. Um, so yeah, when I'm using the cross trainer or elliptical, as I think they call it in America. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this. It's really nice to read off. The screen is fantastic. Um, as I said in the first impressions video, slightly bigger screen than the previous version of the Paperwhite. So that had a six inch screen. This is 6.8. 6.8, slightly smaller than the um, Oasis screen, which is seven inches. Um, but to be honest with you, you don't notice the difference. You get the same amount of text on the screen. Uh, and it's a wonderfully comfortable screen to read off. Um, what I'll do now is I'll flip the camera and show you uh, the menu systems and things like that. Just give you a feeling for how it works and talk about a few more of my impressions. Okay, so here we go. You can see Mr. Michael Caine there um, in uh, a shot from the film of Get Carter. I'm reading the novel of Get Carter at the moment, clearly. Um, and I have to say it's fantastic. It's a book I've never really considered reading before, but I'd thoroughly recommend it if you like gritty crime novels. It's brilliant. Um, so anyway, let me, oh, and also worth saying, so this, abil the ability to show covers, the, the cover of the book you're reading um, when the Kindle is asleep, um, is a fairly new feature that Amazon added, long overdue, because I think other devices like the Kobo have had it for ages, but it, it's a nice feature, I do like it. Um, so to wake it up, you just push the button on the bottom, um, which is very small, but actually quite easy to find. Um, if you've got one of the covers for it, most of those have the kind of auto wake feature. So when you open the book, it automatically um, turns on, which I think is a nice feature. But I quite like just having the Kindle bare, to be honest with you, partly because it feels so nice. So it's got this lovely, soft, kind of silky smooth uh, rubber plasticky type cover or back. Um, so it's really, really nice to hold, albeit, as you can see, it is a bit of a 
fingerprint magnet so it does pick up the oils from your skin and display those um, quite visibly that's the only problem with it um, but yeah so in terms of actually reading as you can see here it is incredibly responsive so page turns are very quick um, you can pull down at any point um, and this is the, the latest version of the Kindle OS that it's running but you can pull down the kind of basic menu system at any point um, I've got it set on a reasonably low brightness but it's bright enough that you know in the dark I can still read quite easily you've got the adjustment there possible for the warmth of the screen as well so you can make it a bit more if I turn the brightness up you can see that a bit better um, so you can make it a bit more or less um, warm the screen which is a, a nice touch um, you've also got on this which is the signature edition so i've got the signature edition which is a bit more expensive um, i went for the signature edition because it's got more storage and i've got a hell of a lot of kindle books um, and i'll talk at the end about my feelings about the signature edition versus the basic edition because there is quite a big difference in price um, but yeah, one of the features you have got with the Signature Edition is this auto brightness, which to be honest with you, I don't use anyway. Um, but aside from that, you've got your other um, kind of key menu items up here. So a sync button, although to be honest with you, it, it syncs pretty reliably. Anyway, you can get into the, all of the settings there. You've got a dark mode, so you can have white text on a black background if you prefer that. Um, Bluetooth, which I keep turned off, but if you're using it um, to listen to Audible books, um, then you can connect Bluetooth headphones, obviously, which is useful because there's no headphone jack. Um, and then you've also got airplane mode there as well. On my Oasis, I had airplane mode switched on all the time because the battery life was so bad and it does help to keep the battery lasting a bit longer. But on the paper, I haven't bothered. Um, and as you can see, so I've been reading on it for a week and I'm down to 35%, you can see at the top there. Um, so it's holding up pretty well. Having said that, Amazon do quote 10 weeks battery life. Um, as I said, this is very much a reader's review. If you're not someone who reads voraciously like I do, then you might get 10 weeks. Um, but, you know, it looks like I'm going to get a week and a half or something like that, maybe a bit less. Um, so, yeah, I think that 10 weeks battery life claim from Amazon is very much based on usage patterns and things like that. So, you can see at the top here, um, a button for the library. Well, I'll just show, show you very quickly here. So at the bottom, you can see how far through the book you are and things like that, and an estimate of how much longer it's going to take to read that chapter. If you tap on that button, you can you get a, a kind of zoomed out view, and it, you can easily scroll through to different places in the book, which is quite handy. Um, so close that. Um, so tap at the top here, and you can go into your library. Now, what I would say is, whilst the like page turn and stuff like that on the paper white is excellent you know really sharp and responsive when you get into the menus and things it does feel a little bit slower um, than the ISIS so it's not bad by any means but it's not quite as responsive and that's particularly true so if I go into the home rather than the library view so you can see it took a little, time, a little bit of time there to refresh um, but on this view you can see you know recommendations from Amazon of other books you might like because obviously they want you to keep buying stuff um, some Kindle Unlimited um, options there Kindle Unlimited depending on what you read I think is, is you know if you read a lot of the kind of stuff that's on Kindle Unlimited then it's a good deal I don't bother because I tend to prefer to buy things so I've got them to refer back to um, but I know lots of people do get a lot of value out of it and also it's worth noting that Amazon are very happy to throw kindle unlimited at you for free in lots of different scenarios so you can get you can always i think get a free month trial um but often they do deals on it at black friday and things like that where you can get you know like three months for hardly any money um so it's worth looking out for those things if you fancy trying it out um obviously it being amazon it's very easy to get into the kindle store um, but again, you can see it's it, and it, for some reason it always does this updating your Kindle store experience, or it does it like one in every five times or something like that, far more than you would expect it would need to. Um, but here we go, so the store's loading up. But yeah, this is again, it's a bit slower than it was on the Oasis, I think. Um, it's not terribly slow, but it's definitely less responsive in this kind of. Um, mode if you like that it is for reading when you're reading a book on it it's absolutely fantastic um, but elsewhere I found it does feel a little bit kind of clunky and stuttery at times uh, so if I close this down 
you can see it's very easy at any point just to jump back into your book because they give you a link to it at the bottom there it'll be the light that's actually going to work okay right so let me open the book again you can see it takes a little bit of time to open it up particularly from this view it seems to open up more quickly from the library view again i don't i've got no idea why that is no oh, look i've got an error um so it's saying it can't open the application, the application being the bit where you read books, which is a fairly fundamental part of the Kindle. So that's odd, I've not seen that before. Worth showing you though, so you know what kind of things can happen. Let's try it again. Oh dear, you're not doing very well here, Kindle. I was going to give you a very good review, but this is quite unheard of. Let me go into the library view and see if it lets me launch my book from there so go to page one of my library which is where that book should be so if i open it it's not going to open it wow well i'm going to keep this in the video because i've never seen it before and it's uh it's not good right I'm going to pause now and restart the video and see if that fixes it. When I said restart the video, of course, what I meant was restart the Kindle. Clearly, restarting the video wouldn't help the Kindle at all. Um, so, yes, the Kindle is now restarting. and We will see if that works. Right, we're back. Let's try this again. As I say, that I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Um, but hopefully a restart has cured it. If it hasn't, then I've got a big problem. There we go, perfect, it's back. Um, so let's just check it. So yeah, still nice and responsive. So everything looks good now. I thought it was worth leaving that in because whilst it's rare, um, obviously this is an electronic device and unlike a paper book, it does sometimes have little glitches like that. It's Monday afternoon. I filmed the bulk of this video on Saturday. And at that point, I thought I was going to be able to kill this Kindle by Sunday evening or sometime on Monday. Um, but I'm still at 19, oh no, it's just gone down to 18%. So I've still got 18% battery. I read, I reckon, I've just been looking on Goodreads and totaling up the page counts for the different things I've read. I reckon I've read about 1,600 pages on it from 100% charge. Um, I read, so I read five novels, which are all, you know, nothing too long, so ranging between about 200 and 400 pages. Um, yeah, between 200 and... So it's Monday afternoon now, um, and I haven't managed to kill this thing yet. I expected to drain the battery um, by Sunday evening or Monday afternoon, um, but I've got to Monday afternoon and I haven't got there yet. I, I filmed the bulk of this video. So it's Monday afternoon now and I still haven't managed to kill the battery on this. I filmed the bulk of the video on Saturday and at that point I thought probably by Sunday evening or Monday I'd managed to get the battery down to zero, um, which is the point at which I want to end the review. Um, but I haven't got there yet, so I'm on about, 80, I think it's just gone down to 18%. Um, so I've still got a way to go. I've read five books from it being fully charged. Um, all of them, you know, nothing too long, um, but nothing too short. So ranging between kind of 200, 400 pages, that sort of mark. Um, I've decided to now read something longer to see if that kills it. So I've started the first book in the Wheel of Time series, which is about 700 pages. Um, so I'm pretty confident I won't get through that whole book without the battery dying. But as I say, I'm still at 18% or so. So I'm going to keep going. Um, and I will film the conclusion to this video once I get to 0%.
just figured out how to turn the page one-handed if you're holding the Kindle in your left hand. And I was quite pleased with myself, so I thought I'd show you. So you kind of hover your thumb over the middle there, put it down, and then do that. I'm sure lots of people already knew that, but I got so used to the buttons on the Oasis, I think I must have forgotten, but it works perfectly. Um, so my one quibble um, has disappeared. Anyway, it is... Uh, Monday evening, let's check where I am, 16%. So I'm getting there, I'm getting there, but um, I'm certainly not going to run it down today um, and probably not tomorrow either. So um, and maybe my video may end up going a bit up a bit later than uh, I planned. Okay, it's Tuesday morning. Um, and I've just got up and got my kid out to do a bit of reading over breakfast and I'm getting the battery level is low message. Um, so hopefully not too long to go now, and I've completely depleted it. So it's Wednesday morning now. I got the very low battery warning yesterday evening when I was reading. Um, I think I'm on about 2 or 3% now. Um, so hoping that today will be the final day and I can edit and post the full video. Cheers! So I've got to the point where I have 1% battery remaining. It's quite exciting. I want to see how far I can get before the Kindle just shuts down. Um, if anyone's seen the episode of Seinfeld where Kramer's driving around in a car with the gas tank showing as empty, um, it's reminded me a bit of that. It's quite an enjoyable experience, so I'll let you know how I get on. Right, I did it. I killed the Kindle. Um, so I got about 270 pages into... The Eye of the World, the first of the Wheel of Time books, um, and it had died. That last one percent seemed to last quite a long time, which was which was nice. Um, so I reckon I've read about eighteen hundred pages um, from one hundred percent down to zero. So I've read A Deadly Shade of Gold by John D. Macdonald, which was four hundred forty-eight pages or thereabouts. The Troop by Nick Cutter, which is four hundred one pages. Um, the Village of Eight Graves, uh, which was 320 pages. Get Carter, which was 224 pages. Um, and Swamp by Peter Tremaine, which was 192. Um, and then, as I say, uh, 270 pages of The Eye of the World, um, which, if my maths is right, is 1,855 pages. Uh, and it's Wednesday now, and I started reading, I think, on the Sunday. So that was like 10 days. So... The 10 weeks that Amazon claimed for it um, was not true for me, but I read a lot. Based on how many pages I've read, if you read 185 pages a week, it would last you um, it would last you 10 weeks. And actually, that's probably not far off what you know many people would read um, on a Kindle. So I think that their 10 week battery life claim probably isn't a million miles away from the truth for a, you know a very average user if you're someone who reads a lot like I do and if you're watching you know booktube videos you're probably someone who reads a lot then expect to get far less than 10 weeks so I guess my summary on this thing would be love the feel of it my uh, actually the only thing I did want to call out while I think of it is I've said it doesn't feel as premium as the Oasis uh, one thing I have noticed is if you tap the back, I don't know if you can hear that, it kind of feels quite hollow. Um, so I think there's a reasonable gap inside between the back of the case and the, the battery and the internals. So it does just feel a little bit cheap um, in that sense, but that's a pretty minor gripe. So apart from that, the screen's fantastic, lovely to read off, comfortable to hold in a variety of different ways. Um, great battery life as far as I'm concerned. Um, Nice and responsive for reading, slightly less responsive than the Oasis when you're navigating around menus and things like that. Um, but for actual reading, and let's be honest, 98% of what you do on the Kindle probably is, is read. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so I've really got no reservations at all about recommending it. The only thing I would say is if you're on a budget, as I said in my original video, um, you can pick up the previous generation of, of the Paperwhite dead cheap at the moment. I think it's about 75 quid or something like that, which is an absolute bargain. Um, so if you do that, you lose the um, the colour temperature setting that you've got on this and also the, um, the slightly larger screen. Um, uh, but apart from that, you know, there's little difference between the previous generation Paperwhite and the, the base model of the 
um, the 2021 Paperwhite. If you're wavering between getting the standard edition of the 2021 Paperwhite or the Signature Edition, unless you've got either absolutely tons of books or loads of audio books, then I would go for the standard edition, to be honest with you. I don't think the um, the adaptive brightness is that great a feature. I don't think the wireless charging is that great a feature. And you probably don't need more than eight gigabytes of storage. Um, I think, you know, and to be honest, even if you do read a lot and have got, you know, a lot of audible books, I think that eight gigs is probably enough if you're willing to do a little bit of storage management. So you may not want to pay that extra. Um, but then again, you know, if you have got tons of books, all those features do appeal to you. I still think the Signature Edition is very good value for money because it's a great device. As always, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Hope you found this video useful and informative. Um, if you came for the Kindle review, stick around for the book reviews. I'm sure you'll find something new to read um, from the stuff I go through, particularly if you like crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, nothing left for me to say other than thanks for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.